Welcome to the State of the Buccaneers podcast. I'm your host, Jacob Peppercorn, and this is the biggest and only fan-run podcast of the East Tennessee State Buccaneers. We'll get right back to you after the tune. Welcome back uh, to the State of the Buccaneers podcast. Um, It's been two weeks uh, since the last episode uh, came out. Um, A lot has happened in ETSU Buccaneer Athletics. Um, As I came came to you last time, uh, we were preparing for the North Dakota State game and just the big big occasion uh, that was. Um, I'm going to recap that tonight. Um, Recap that exciting game. Um, It turned out about what I expected, Um, although that that loss was heartbreaking, man. We'll get into that in a minute. Um, we're going to get into uh, the Elon game as well. I'm going to have less clarity on that since I I just looked at the highlights for that and read read the box score. I was um, the game was on Flow Sports, um, so most of us couldn't watch it unless you paid. Um, they didn't have it on at Johnny Brusco's uh, watch party, um, and I was at the night race myself, so I was just following my dad's uh, phone. He had the game tracker pulled up on his phone on ESPN. I couldn't even pull that up on my phone uh, because the service at the night race is typically pretty bad, spotty at best, um, because there's so many people there, and they throttle uh, the speed, data speed. Um, But, yeah, I'll get into the recap of that. Um, We're going to get into – the preview for this upcoming week, week's game against the Citadel. Um, I will probably be watching that. I forget what time it is. I'm not sure if it's a noon game or later. Um, if it's a noon game, I probably won't. I may pull it up on my phone. We'll see. Um, cause I'll be out of town. Um, going, what else? Going to football games, um, just to celebrate my birthday. Um, but yeah, um, so we have a fun show tonight. Also, ETSU basketball released their schedule. I'm going to break that down um, and talk about some other ETSU related sports stuff. The women's volleyball team, um, sort of their turnaround this year. I don't know much about volleyball, but I'm going to do my best because I cover everything ETSU athletics. If there's a noteworthy story, I'm going to bring it to you. Um, it's going to be kind of a s- smaller episode tonight, although we could go very well, could go 45 minutes to an hour, depending on how much I talk. Um, but I am pretty worn out. Um, I've had a long day. If you didn't know, today is my birthday, uh, 25th of September. So go ahead and wish me. I talked about it on Twitter. Had a lot of people uh, wishing me a uh, happy birthday, listeners of the show. Um, And just everybody else in between. Um, So, stay to the Buccaneers. I'm coming to you with a special birthday episode. Um, I had to get this one out. Um, But I'm going to try to go do all the breakdown I can. Um, So, without further ado, let's get started. Um, Yeah, just that North Dakota State game. Um, I was optimistic. We had a chance. And I would... I knew we had a chance. Um, The spread was like 28 and a half points or something crazy like that. Maybe even more. Um, But ETSU shattered through that early. um, Early North Dakota State struck early. I'm going to share my screen here. Um, Let's see. I'm going to share this. Um, Yeah, the final score is 38 to 35. Uh, it was a heartbreaker, um, but North Dakota State struck early. Um, they scored 14 quick points, but ETSU uh, scored. Um, we're going to do play-by-play. We'll come back to the stats. Um, ETSU responded after North Dakota State came out and struck them in the mouth. And it was sort of a back and forth all the first half, um, and eventually ETSU gained momentum towards the end of the first half. Um, and went up 21 to 17. Um, 
and continued continued into the second half and went up 20 28 to 17. Eventually, um, North Dakota State scored another touchdown, but ETSU um, a key play. North Dakota State missed a field goal, so it was a, still a two score two score game. And then ETSU thought they had uh, thought they had put the game away after they scored a touchdown and uh, stopped them on defense. But ETSU had a quick three and out um, that didn't take much time off the clock, um, and North Dakota State got the ball back. Uh, Towards the end of the game, scored really quickly within 50 seconds, and then got an onside kick um, in a tough, heartbreaking play. Um, it was a muff punt uh, or muffed onside kick. Um, they, they recovered, and of course, with ETSU's defense having two pretty, uh, pretty much three drives back to back, gave up the touchdown, and ETSU. Um, there was a brutal drop on their drive to go back. They didn't have much time left. Um, but Jalen King threw a turnover, threw a pick to pretty much end the game. Um, there wasn't a whole lot. Uh, yeah, uh, just a heartbreaking game all around. But I was impressed with the team, um, with how much turnover we had, bringing in a majority uh Majority new players, um, given a tough game. Uh, it was a great game day environment. Um, I, it was it set the record for most fans at an ETSU game. I believe they have it on here. Um, yeah, the te- announced attendance was eleven thousand forty, um, and it was just a great game day experience. Plenty of tailgaters out there. Um, lots of North Dakota State fans came in for this one. I talked to a few of them, welcomed them to Johnson City. Um, it was a big, a big, big atmosphere, of course, for the number two team in FCS. And they look like the number two uh, FCS team, uh, even even through their defensive struggles. Um, they have one of the best offenses out there, uh, led by Cam Miller. He's, he's the reason they won the game. He was pretty much perfect. He didn't turn the ball over. He had a couple – Risky throws that ETSU should have picked off, um, but that I think that was the big determining factor. Not even those lucky plays. Uh, we could have played better on defense, um, and I think I think Trey Lamb agree would agree with that assessment. Um, we held them. We held them in a lot of key situations, but just couldn't hold them on that last one of those last drives. Um, and had had a couple bad bounces and ended up losing the game. Um, but uh, just breaking down our score, uh, the score, Jalen King had a touchdown, six of fifteen for one thirteen yards. Um, he he had a pretty good game, other than the pick at the end. A lot of those incompletions were just b- balls that he threw away, um, and a couple drops. Um, it kind of made it worse than it looked. Um, he was doing most of his stuff on the ground. Uh, he had 79 yards. He was moving excellent in the pocket, extending plays. Um, but the big standout from the North Dakota State game was Bryson Irby by far. Um, he had 147 yards and three touchdowns. Um, that is kind of a breakout game for him. He's kind of had potential. Um, he's just kind of been bubbling and building and building. Um, I believe that's both career highs for him in a game Um, because in uh, 2023, he had last year, he had 531 yards, five touchdowns. Um, He's just sort of been the backup, uh, of course, behind Quay Holmes and Jacob Saylor. So he is starting to show his progression, um, sort of what – sort of becoming that next in that lineage. Um, didn't see a lot of action from Devonte Houston. I think he got banged up in the North Dakota State game because um, he wasn't playing against Elon. I know he's out for like two weeks now. Um, I'm not sure if he got hurt in this game or got hurt in practice. Um, but he didn't – he didn't have – he had a quiet game. 
35 yards, good, decent spell back there. Um, just sort of uh, trying to be that one-two punch with uh, uh, Bryson Irby. Um, had some – Cameron Lewis also balled out, had five receptions for 73 yards in a – a great grab. Um, that was a touchdown from King. Um, they connected quite a bit. Uh, there's some good defensive plays, a lot of good defensive plays. Um, Cam Miller for, uh, he was just all over the field. Um, uh, North Dakota state's rushing game wasn't that great. Um, I wouldn't say they were insane. Um, they just kind of, did what they needed to do outside of Cam Miller. I think Cam Miller extended a lot of plays with his arm, his accuracy, his decision making. Um, and that was the difference. Uh, we did a good job on their top targets. Um, he just found that third or fourth read um, at the end of plays. And I think that's what cost us the game, uh, especially that one wheel route. Um, he found, he found, uh, I don't know who who it was, but there was one one play where he got an insane throw um, down the field, and uh, it just kind of that kind of changed momentum in the game. All those all those little steps build up, but I, uh, this game, I think, even though we lost, it gave us votes in a couple of the FCS polls, um, and going toe-to-toe with a program like North Dakota State in a first-year situation with a new head coach. That says, speaks volumes to how far we've come from last year um, and the year before. Um, there is serious change in the program. There's stuff we can work on, but the team is progressing. Jalen King, QB's progressing. You see the progressions of every single player on the team. Um, and, um, we're going to continue to get better, um, just going into this week. Um, so yeah, uh, that's all I can say about the North Dakota state game. Um, once again, great environment. Hope to see more people at the next home game. I think we're going to see sellouts for the rest of the year. Um, cause this team, this team is worth it. I will say that a hundred percent, um, it was it was a struggle to get to home games for me um, during the Quarles era. Um, there just wasn't a whole lot of hope or optimism on the field. You could see it in the players' body language um, and just overall uh, preparation. With this team, you see the preparation. You see we don't make – well, we do have mistakes, but we don't make like nine, a bunch like – Against app, we're one. I don't think we had that many penalties. Um, we've had many penalties through these th- first four games of the season. Um, and, uh, I'm just going to transition into uh, the Elon game. Uh, let's move. Let's go to crap because I'm clicked on the box score. Um, we. This weekend, this past weekend, uh, we went on the road to uh, Elon, uh, North Carolina, to take on the Fe- Elon Phoenix. Um, they're a good CAA program. Um, they used to be in the Southern Conference. Um, they're about middle of the road in FCS. Some years they're in the playoffs, some not. Uh, uh, former uh, James Madison coach, um, now at Indiana, uh, Kurt Signetti, he he got his start at least on the, in the D1 ranks at Elon after coming up from D2. Um, he had them pretty respectable uh, when he was there. Um, but they're all right team. They were receiving votes um, this the previous week or last week before before we played Elon. Um, but we took care of business um, 34 to 14. I was following – following along that scoreboard. And when I saw we got up 17 to nothing, we came out firing and on all cylinders uh, against them. I'll tell you what, freaking Jalen King had himself a game. Um, 
he he had 233 yards passing. Um, he continues to just improve in his progressions and reads. On the ground, he had 93 rushing yards and two touchdowns, um, including a 56-yard run to get us in field goal range uh, to put us up 17 to nothing. His playmaking is outstanding. Um, I've seen the article on WJHL. Uh, he, from where he wa- was week one even to now, like I I really see he's he's a SOCOM player of the year candidate, like offensive player of the year candidate. Um, he just he just has that explosiveness. He he can beat you with his arm, beat you with his legs. That's what I saw back in the spring. Um, he's starting to get better at his progressions every single week. Um, and we saw it this week against Elon. The defense held them to 14 points, um, too, um, which is good. Uh, their QB only had 129 passing yards, which is a good performance after uh, the North Dakota State game. He's for a QB that played at programs like Georgia and TCU. Louisiana Tech, uh, just keeping him in check, keeping their ground game. And yeah, they didn't have many yards of offense at all for a modern college football game. Just keeping them, controlling the time of possession. Let's see, how much time of possession do we have in this game? Beat them by three minutes. Held them, forced two turnovers. That's that's the key in the game. Bryson Irby had another great game. Even though he was banged up, uh, 96 yards in the touchdown. Uh, he's all SoCon. He's producing like an all SoCon if he stay, stays healthy. Um, fingers crossed he plays for Citadel game in the Citadel game. Um, Devontae Houston's out right now, but uh, we do have some good backups. Cameron Laborn from uh, Buffalo, Buffalo Transport. I th- I th- Laborn, I think that's how his name's pronounced. I could be wrong. I have not – I didn't watch the game, so I didn't see see it pronounced. Um, he had a touchdown, a 17-yard scamper. Ephraim Floyd, he's a wide receiver. I'm assuming those were jet sweeps to him. Ephraim Floyd. Trey Foster, of course. Uh, he was on the roster last year. He has potential. Um, he's a good third third guy in this backfield. Um, just having, I, we have, we have a lot of depth here at running back. Um, so we shouldn't be too hurt by Irby and Houston being banged up, but we need them back. We've seen their explosive playmaking these first several weeks. Um, just keeping them healthy. That's a key, uh, key in the stretch down the road in the SoCon. Um, let's see, receiving Hakeem Maget. I believe he was a Gardner Webb guy. Yeah, Gardner Webb. He has 171 re- pat or receiving yards already. Um, we got him, Efren F from Floyd, Kareem Page, AJ Johnson. They're spreading the rock around. We had 233 yards passing. Um, Jalen King did have a fumble in the game, but nothing that can be overcome. Ewan Johnson. Two of two for field goal, long of 30. Um, he had a good game. Nate Brackett punting. We had some good punts as well. Um, yeah, good game all around. Um, so, yeah, that's all I can say um, about the Elon game. I didn't get to watch much of it, but I'm happy. Um, it helps us to even improve. We're just outside that top 25 I thought we were going to get it at two and two, but after the year we had last year, um, I'd guess voters are being a little bit cautious. Um, I'd say if we beat the Citadel this weekend, uh, that'll push us over the edge. Um, the Citadel so far this season is two and two as well. Um, their two wins are a 54 to nothing victory over North Greenville and a one point victory over Charleston Southern. Their two losses are to South Carolina State and Mercer. Um, they look decent. They're better than they were the previous two years. 
Um, because they have a legit QB, D1 QB, and Jonathan Bennett from um, – from, he played at Liberty for four years, um, was quite experienced, sort of didn't get the starting job over Caden Salter, of course, because Salter is a baller um, for Jamie Coach Jamie Chadwell, ETSU Buck um, there. Um, so – just looking at their team, of course, they're always good at, going to be good at running. Um, at Citadel, they're a military academy, so they're always going to have someone that can run the ball. Um, I don't think they run the true option anymore, I do believe. Um, I think they're more of a, a different type of offense now. But um yeah, just looking down their stats, we're going to have to stop the run, which we've done a good job at. That's been our – we haven't – we've done a good job at stopping the run, just haven't been able to stop the downfield passes um, against, like, North Dakota State and App State. That's what the, the two games we lost, that was the struggle. Um, but um, we take them on this weekend. Um, let's look at the time, 2 p.m., so I'll probably catch the second half of the game um, just based on where I'll be at. Um, it is, of course, in Charleston. So any Buck fans making the trip, um, salute to you. I will not be there in Charleston. But, um, yeah, I, I think this is one of these games, um, another game where we're going to see where our program's at in terms of the SOCON, because this is our first conference game of the year. Um, if we can beat the Citadel early, um, it helps give us a chance um, to get ever so close, closer to the goal of making the FCS playoffs. Um, we're we're going to have to win this one. We're going to have to win this game. We're going to have to win VMI. We're going to have to win Wofford. Um, Sanford, we're going to have to win all the four of those games. We need to beat the bottom feeders or average teams, other average teams of the SOCON. Um, cause right now the top dog, uh, so far this season has been the Mercer, Mercer bears. They are four and Uh, they beat Presbyterian Bethune Cookman. They beat the Citadel last week by 14 points. Is that 14 points? 17 points, actually. Um, beat Chattanooga by seven. They are the top dog, even though they changed coaches. Uh, they picked up DJ Smith. We'll, we'll get more into that when we have our preview. But that that's probably going to end up being our biggest game of the year against Mercer, other than North Dakota State, of course. Um, I think every game is a big game for ETSU this year, like, they're just not – well, other than VMI, I think all all of our conference games are going to be barn burners. Um, so it's going to be a tough road um, if we lose to the Citadel. We need – I'd say this this is bordering on must-win territory for ETSU. Um, Chattanooga's been – had a rough start. Um Citadel is 0-1 in the conference there. Decent. VMI has been horrible, of course. Who did they get smacked by? I know they got smacked by Georgia Tech last weekend, but Norfolk State, yeah, that's a bad loss for them. A bad lo- All four of their losses have been bad, although Georgia Tech is a great team or a good team. Um, I don't think any of those should have been blowouts, especially with Danny Rocco as head coach. Um, he's quite experienced at uh, Richmond, so something's got to give there um, with VMI. Uh, Western has been all right. Furman's been disappointing. Sanford's been disappointing. Wofford, they've been all right. They have a good win against Richmond. Good, all right win against Gardner Webb, and lost to William and Mary, just like VMI did. They may be on the rebound after the horrible year. It seems like all the horrible teams from last year's conference are starting to turn around other than VMI, poor VMI. Um, 
But, um, yeah, they have a good QB with Amari Odom. Um, but, yeah, uh, I think this is a critical game for down the SoCon title race. And um, I'll go back to Citadel briefly. Um, I I hope we do have keep rolling, keep the offense on fire um, in Charleston. In uh, let's look at our the game Johnson Hay Good Stadium. Um, I hope we keep it rolling because um, we've looked really good this year so far. I've been I've been impressed. I'm impressed by Trey Lamb. I think Trey Lamb was an A plus hire for the Bucks. Um, he he has done exactly what he said he was going to do. Has met all of his promises. We I, we started about what I expected two and two. Um, so to get out of that tough non conference slate with just a two and two record, well, other, I mean, that's. That's what we need to do to set us up for success. Even though we should have won the uh, North Dakota State game, we still have a lot of time to go. Oh, yeah, another another thing I forgot to mention. Uh, Western Carolina had probably the biggest non-conference game of the weekend. They went out to Missoula. Is it Missoula? Hold on. I think it's Missoula. I could be wrong. It's not Missoula. It's yeah, it's Missoula. They went out to Missoula to take on Montana, um, one of the premier FCS powers. Sort of like our game, game series or our series against North Dakota State. That's it's that level, but uh, yeah. Uh, crap! I just killed a bug. Yeah. Funny blooper for the for anybody watching on YouTube. Um, yeah, they lost 46 to 35, uh, their insane offense, keep them in the game, but their defense, uh, I bet Cole was watching that game. Cole Spivey was watching that game. Um, but a good showing overall, uh, especially going into a road environment like Montana, their fans are good fan base, um, out, out in the mountains of Montana, you just, one of the most beautiful stadiums I've seen. Uh, all those Western stadiums are just immaculate. Um, but, yeah, that was a side tangent. Um, let's get back to the Citadel game. I'm going to give my score prediction. Um, I believe the Bucks pull off a victory. It's not going to be an easy victory, um, but I think... The Bucks pull through with their good offense. I think it's going to be a final score of uh, about 34 to 21. I think it's going to be kind of a shootout, the first of many here in the Southern Conference. Um, I think we get the win um, just because Citadel, I think, is a little less, has a little worse offense than us. Um, I don't think their def- I think their defense is just all right. Um, because they allowed 38 to Mercer, 20 to South Carolina State, 21 to Charleston Southern. They'll they'll have some, they'll have more firepower than Elon did, um, but it won't be super. I wouldn't say it won't be a super close game. I think it's always going to be a one or two score game. Um, I don't think it's ever going to get into blowout territory. I could be wrong, but. Um, I'd say 34-21 is about what I expect. Um, so, yeah, um, that's all I have for football this week. Um, just recapping those two games, previewing the Citadel. Um, yeah, that's that's all I've got. Um, so, uh, yeah, let's transition into uh, basketball. Um the little bit I have on basketball this week. Um, but first we're going to do uh, a trivia question. Like I used usually like to do. Um, I was going to say uh, 
is going to be Citadel themed since we're playing the Citadel this week. Um, I was going to say, I'm going to ask you all. The question is, who kill, who kicked, not killed, um, who kicked the game-winning field goal in the 2003 game against the Citadel? Um, this, if I had, if you all don't remember, you you're younger. Um, this was the final game of ETSU football after they had announced that they were going to cut the program um, back in 2003. Um, ETSU had a couple sort of FU wins to the administration at the time, uh, Chattanooga being one of them, a blowout on Chattanooga. And uh, this was the final one at the mini old mini dome, um, the field, final field of the game. Um, it was a close game, uh, back and forth, but, uh, in the final seconds, ETSU kicked a game winning field goal to win 16, 13. I believe it was, I believe it was an overtime. Um, was it an overtime? Let me check. Uh, it was a 22 yard field goal. No, it was to just end the game straight out. It wasn't overtime. Correct me if I'm wrong below because I was a little kid then and I did not live in Tennessee. Um, but, uh, yeah, that was a – that's one of the uh, defining moments, I'd say, for a lot of the older fan base um, and sort of the rallying cry for why ETSU deserved football back in the first place. Um but anyway, that I was going to, I'm just going to answer the question. I don't really have options because kickers with the kickers, everyone's going to know it's going to be the one, the name people know the least, at least among my younger viewers. Um, the kicker that uh, kicked that game winning field goal was uh, Jonathan God- Godfrey. Um, he was a, a local, local product. Um, from Science Hill High School. Um, he started out at Tennessee and then transferred to ETSU. Um, and I'd say that's that was the defining moment of his field goal kicking career with the Bucks. Um, but yeah, um, I just wanted to throw some trivia out there. I give you give you all some a brain teaser. Um, I'm sure some of you answered before I did. Um, but yeah, uh now we're going to transition into basketball. Um, of course, the season is still a couple months away, but uh, practice has started for most of the country, um, and that was no difference for the Bucks. Uh, people have all the last couple of weeks. Most teams have finalized their schedule and are now starting practice. Um, ETSU announced uh, their full schedule. Um, I'm going to share it. Let's share it real quick. Um, uh, ETSU 2024, 2025 schedule. Uh, we start off the season, of course, uh, with the charity game in Freedom Hall representing, uh, uh Finnegan's Challenge and Uncommon Grit Foundation. Uh, I, w- I, of course, will be there at that game. Good charity foundation, good causes, um, against a good mid major team. Um, and sort of our first look at the new bucks for this year. Uh, we then go in, I believe, I'm not sure if this is a actual game. I think it is an actual game counted towards our schedule uh, with Newberry. Um, then we have the SOCON a sun challenge game against Eastern Kentucky at home. I'll probably be at that game. I'll be probably be at most of these games if we're real. Um, Tusculum on November 13th. I'm going to say Tusculum is the reason we – Tusculum and Newberry um, probably had other people lined up there first, but took those games because those were easy, easy game, easy local games, um, D2 schools that we could get in uh, to give us home games. Um, I know there's been scheduling difficulties in the past. Then we go a uh, return trip to, at Davidson. I hope we beat them again. Um, that would be cool. Uh, another, we start our midseason 
tournament in Johnson City, uh, sort of our uh, home home stand. Freedom Hall is going to be busy. Uh, they are hosting uh, with that charity game, and then we have this uh, midseason tournament, um, and then the Big South Conference tournament uh, out in April or not April, but uh, March. And uh, so yeah, Freedom Hall is going to be busy this year. Uh, we play USC Upstate and Queens um, through that uh, midseason tournament. A um, couple good non-conference opponents to get in here. We play at Charlotte versus Austin P. Going to be at that game 100%. Um, the Oh, James Madison's on a Tuesday. I thought about making a road trip for that, but that's probably not going to happen uh, since it's a 7 p.m. game. Um at Charlotte and Wichita State, those are our two bye games. I think we have a chance in both of those because neither team has been all that impressive. Um, new coaching staff at Wichita State with Paul Mills and Charlotte, uh, they've just been up and down, had several different coaches these past few years. They're in the American, but their basketball hasn't been impressive. Most of their best players have gone portal in. Um, Jameer Young, he played at Charlotte. At its, I think he, I don't think I think he's exhausted his eligibility at Maryland. Um, but those will be interesting, interesting, a lot of in, interesting non-conference opponents. Go on the road at Jacksonville as part of that SoCon A Sun Challenge. Elon, uh, back trip of that, back trip of Kansas City. So we have a good. Good mix of mid majors um, and smaller schools in our non conference. Our first conference game is VMI on New Year's Day. Well, I'll be, I'll, I will 100% beat that game. Wofford, I'll be at that game. Go on the road to Mercer, Citadel, um, at Furman, at Sanford, Western Chattanooga. Those are going to be two big games. At UNCG versus Furman at VMI versus Sanford. Uh, you can see the rest of it. I'm not going to read the rest off. Uh, last home game is against Mercer on February the 26th. And we end the conference schedule at the Citadel. So hopefully that's an easy game, but you never know. Um, but I, I really like the schedule. Um, I think Brooke Savage did a good job getting this together. Um, and I think it's going to really test us, at least for mid-major basketball. Um, I hope it prepares us if we do, on the off chance, make the tournament. Um, but that's all I kind of wanted to say about our basketball schedule and basketball practice. Um, so, yeah, looks schedule looks good. Um, I'd say the last thing, last topic I wanted to get into um, was about ETSU women's volleyball. Um, it's been a little bit more quiet. Um, they had a coaching change in the off season as well. Um, a part of sort of a part of all that controversy I've gotten into in the past. Um, and they have turned their program around. Uh, they are currently eight and four after winning only six matches uh, last year or six, six, uh, game total games of volleyball, not just matches. Matches are the oh, I'm I'm starting to get tired, man. But uh, they have won uh, eight games uh, already, and they're not even into their conference schedule yet. Um, and si- last year they had like they were six and twenty three, um, but they brought back Lindsey Devine um, as their head coach. They had some good, good wins. Elon, Marshall, Elon, UNC, Asheville, Davidson. No, they lost to Marshall. Never mind. I'm stupid. I was just reading off their schedule again. I was so into reading schedules that I kept reading them. But their mo- most noteworthy win, of course, was upsetting Power Five West Virginia. Um, so hopefully. Success continues there into Southern Conference play, and we have a team in the NCAA tournament. Um, that's all I wanted to mention about that. Um, I haven't been keeping up with 
the other sports as much, uh, just cause of, uh, just cause of work, uh, at real work. Um, and, uh, so this, I didn't want to have a super long episode tonight. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's all I had. All I had, I just wanted to get another episode out there. I uh, get some uh, conversation generated. Don't be afraid to comment down below. Um, if different types of con- content you want to see reactions. Um, if you want to be on the show itself, just let me know. My DMS are always open on Twitter, Instagram, um, whatever way you want to get in contact with me. Um, I would appreciate it and spread the word, uh, that the state of the Buccaneers podcast, um, is still on, still around. Um, I try to do a good job of getting it out to the fan groups on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, everyone that is a friend of the show. Um, but, um, I think that's all I have for tonight. Um, so I hope you all enjoyed, enjoyed this episode. Um, and I will be back with you next week, uh, to talk about the Citadel game. Um, I'd like to do another, uh, live reaction, um, to something in the near future. Um, I know I'm going to do some on-site stuff against Chattanooga. I didn't do it for the North Dakota state game. I was just too busy. I was too focused on get (laughs) holding our dang tent down, uh, or canopy down with the wind. Um, but yeah, that's all I have for tonight. Um, so don't forget to donate to, uh, bucks for good and support our student athletes, support our pursuits at SOCON championships and NCAA tournament wins and all that fun stuff. Um, but, uh, yeah, if there's anything. Hey, all, y'all, I just wanted to say at the end of the episode cut off, uh, on Riverside. So, uh, just wanted to say, uh, the closing in, or closing remarks, uh, just wanted to say Godspeed, go Bucks, and good night, y'all. Or good day, whichever. <laughs>